Hello everyone, welcome back for another lesson. So in this lesson we will talk more specifically about links and their characteristics. So how do we describe links? So the linking function is the connection between two parts or more. They exist in an object that is composed of at least two parts since they're connecting two parts. Obviously you have to have two parts to your system. And each link can be described using four characteristics. So we're going to look at each characteristic one at a time. So the first one, we will say, is it a direct link or an indirect link? In the case of a direct link, there's no substance or component that, are, that is linking the two parts together. If we think of a Tupperware, of a plastic container, the lid and the container itself are just holding together because of their design. So you're just putting pressure on the top to link it to the bottom part. There's no glue, there's no extra attachment that will keep them together. So that's a direct link. Same thing for Legos. So Legos or any kind of block that is similar to that, you'll connect them together just by using a little bit of pressure. Again, their design allows them to connect together without using uh, another substance or component. Okay, so this is direct. They're directly touching, basically. Indirect. So an indirect link is when you actually use a substance or another component to hold parts together. So here we have bricks. Well, you need some uh, cement grout uh, to hold them together. Same thing for ceramics, for example. So you need a substance to hold the bricks together. Uh, in other uh, systems, it could be glue that's holding things together. It could be nails. It could be screws. So as soon as there is another component that's holding everything together, then it is an indirect link. Then we have removable versus non-removable. So are we able to remove that link? So let's say the door hinge over here. Can we remove the door hinge without damaging the door and the wall? Well, the answer is yes. We could still put a new hinge. Let's say we don't like the color of this one. We could put a new hinge and put back the door, attach the door back to the wall, and the door would be functional again. So this would be an example of a removable link. If it's non-removable, that means that you're going to break the object if you try to remove the actual link. So if I remove the cement here, or if it chips away over time, it starts uh, chipping away, well, the bricks might fall off. And that's because you've removed the link between the various bricks. So you cannot remove the link, um, or if you do remove the link, it's going to break your object. So in this case, we'd call it non-removable. If you think of a pair of scissors, that little component that holds the two blades together cannot be removed. If you don't, if you can't picture it in your head, just pause the video and go get a pair of scissors and look at it. That little piece of metal that holds the two blades together is not removable. It's not a screw. So if you were to remove that, you couldn't put your two blades back together. So that would be another example of a non-removable link. Then we have rigid versus elastic. We're talking about the link itself. So let's say we take a, a look at screws. Well, screws are not exactly mush, right? So they're rigid. So these cannot be deformed. An elastic can be deformed. So this is an example of an elastic link. So anything made of rubber or very so a very soft type of link, that would be elastic. If you think of a Tupperware, it is a direct link, so there's no substance per se, but if we had to really qualify it as elastic or rigid, well, Tupperware would tend to be elastic, right? Because we can bend um, the top a little bit in order to fit it properly on the bottom part. So that would be another example of an elastic link. So rigid versus elastic, it's really the link itself. If it's uh, very hard or if it's kind of softer. And then we have complete versus partial. So a complete link doesn't allow for the parts that are linked together to move independently. In a hammer, well, this here and this here will move together, right? These two are linked, but I can't start bending this part, for example, and this will stay rigid. That doesn't work that way. But in a partial link, so such as a pair of scissors, well, this one blade moves independently from the other blade. Okay, so the parts can move independently. This is called partial. If everything moves as a block, as a whole, then it's called complete. 
So if we take a look at an object and we try to apply all these um, uh, concepts, um, it would go like this. So we have a door, we have hinges, right? We have the wall and we have the door. So the links are the hinges. That's what holds the door or attaches the door to the wall. So if we take a look or if we think of those hinges, are they removable or non-removable? Are we able to remove the door, remove the hinges, change the hinges, put back the door, and everything is as perfect as before? The answer is yes. So it makes it a removable type of link. It can be replaced without breaking the whole, the whole system. Is it complete or is it partial? So is there movement between the door and the wall? Well, yes, the door, the door can move. The wall stays, stays still, obviously. So it's partial. There is movement. Not everything moves together. The wall is not moving with the door. So it makes it partial. Are the hinges rigid or elastic? Well, they're made of metal, so obviously they would be rigid. And is this direct or indirect? Is the link direct or indirect? So is the door touching the wall directly or is there something holding them together? Well, the hinges are holding them together. So that makes it an indirect link. Okay, so that's how we apply these various concepts in relation to a link, how we describe a link using four qualities. So that's it for links. If you have questions, please reach out. Otherwise, I will see you for your next lesson, which will talk about the other functions. Well, until then, take care.